Hi, this is Brother Richard, <coughs> and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Brother Talker's Mystery. This will be part two, 92. And our <coughs> title of today's lesson is Beginning of Sorrows, Part 2. We want to take a look at the conditions that will be prevalent at the time of what the Bible calls the beginning of sorrows. We've characterized it as <coughs> being a time of radical change. Change in which <coughs> the normal mind can't comprehend the extent. <coughs> Scripture teaches the beginning of sorrows will herald the end of the teaching of organized religion. Jeremiah 23, verses 1 to 2. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastor, saith the Lord. <clears throat> Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. You have scattered my flock, have driven them away, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. So their judgment is going to <coughs> include <coughs> the, uh, the result of the things they have done, the life they've led, the things they've taught, the <coughs> finality of their actions. Turn to Jeremiah 25, verse 34 to 36. Just as we're turning. Yes. Will the pastors and leaders who <coughs> did not feed the sheep have the full understanding that that's the case by the time they get to the torment regions? Mm -hmm. So they'll know every single instance of their transgressions. Well, they'll know that it's a judgment. It's going to be pronounced upon them. Okay. Uh, I believe there won't be any um, uh, confusion as to why they're experiencing what they're experiencing because right. it's a judgment. Right. You stand before the judge of a court, he's going to elucidate your crimes. Yes. <clears throat> and uh, the sentence that you brought upon yourself is a result of the crimes you've committed. <clears throat> so Jeremiah 25, verse 34 to 36. howl ye shepherds and cry and wall yourselves in the ashes you principal of the flock for the days of your slaughter and of your dispersions are accomplished and you shall fall like a pleasant vessel <coughs> now <coughs> it goes on to say <coughs> Shepherds shall have no way to flee, nor the principle of the flock to escape. A voice of the cry of the shepherds and in howling of the principle of the flock shall be heard, for the Lord had spoiled their pasture. Now the word voice there, verse 36, comes from a Hebrew term <coughs> kol, which means sound noise. So it's saying the sound <coughs> of the cry. The word cry comes from a Hebrew term sikawa which means wailing. So it's talking about the sound of the wailing of the shepherds and the howling of the principle of the flock. So it's giving us an understanding, a picture that these individuals are in a state of torment. All of them immediately, simultaneously. Yes. And the torment.
from that. As a result of the conditions that they are experiencing. If you pinch a baby, it's going to cry. Why? Because it's in pain. Do you understand that some of their conditions are more intense than others? Mm -hmm. mm. Yes. Even though they're all in the same location. Yes. And I will agree with that, but it's because of the depth of their deceit. Yeah, we know. Yeah, they really brought upon themselves the condition which just read, I will visit upon you the result of your own doing. Right. So what they have done translates into a condition you're going to experience <coughs> fraternity. Let's go on. <coughs> Drop down to verse 37. And the peaceable habitations are cut down because of the fierce anger of the Lord. <coughs> What's being said here is that we're given a, a picture of why they are suffering. The word peaceful comes from the Hebrew term shalom, which in this case means prosperous, safe. The peaceable, the prosperous, safe habitations are cut down. The word cut down comes from a Hebrew term Eximiae, which means departed. So what's happened here is the estates in which they are cohabiting have radically changed from peaceable to tormenting. I could imagine that, Mr. Jones, because of being impure in a pure condition would be super uncomfortable. Well, what's being said here is that what they've been enjoying <clears throat> has radically their 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 surroundings have radically changed from what they have been experiencing. They've been living on the high side. They have been experiencing luxury luxurious conditions, and what has happened is the conditions have changed to torment where they are. They haven't been taken from one place to another. Where they are has experienced radical change. Can we just quickly answer a question? Yes. So we've just established that each one of them will experience the intensity of their torment to the degree that they've transgressed. Yes. Does that translate into the fierceness of his anger? Yes. Looks like it. Okay. Yes. So, so one over there, his reason of anger is this much. <coughs> and the next one is this much. What he said, turn to Jeremiah 25 verse 30. Right up the page. <clears throat> Therefore prophesy thou against them all these words, and say unto them, The Lord shall roar from on high, and utter his voice from his holy habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation. He shall give a shout as they that tread against all the inhabitants of the earth. The word of God <coughs> is <coughs> mightier than a two-edged sword. He's changing the conditions. He's speaking torment into their existence, mm. where before it was peaceable habitations. They were in estates of luxury. And he now pronounces a judgment which radically changes that to a state of torment right where they are now this <clears throat> this is not unique there are going to be times in which the same condition is going to take place turn to Isaiah 34 verse 9 to 10 it's going to be the same type of judgment that falls on Idumea Edom <clears throat> the brother of <clears throat> Of uh, actually, his name is Esau, brother of Jacob. 
you said, right where they are. <coughs> yes. So they're experiencing the torment before they actually arrive at the torment regions. No, I'm saying that it becomes a torment region. Okay, it, where they are turns where into... Where they are is turning uh, into a torment region. Okay. Isaiah 34, verse 9 to 10. And the streams thereof, now this is a region of luxury in which Idumea, it's the capital of Idumea, which was in, in the old covenant called Edom. It's the place where they reside. <clears throat> the mountains of Edom, you know, they were a possession given to them by God. Well, they're going to be inhabiting, inhabiting this when it's instantaneously changed to a hell. The streams thereof, I'm talking about the rivers, the waters, shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land thereof shall become burning pitch. It shall not be quenched night nor day, the smoke thereof shall go up forever. From generation to generation it shall be waste None shall pass through it forever and ever. <coughs> so, <coughs> what happens? God changes this thing from a place of delight to a place of torment. Yes. Is it hell? Yes. It is. It's yes. expanding. Yes. Hell's expanded. Mm -hmm. Where. Probably hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of people are here. All of a sudden, instantaneously, this thing is changed to hell. Is that activity described as them going down to the pit? No. It's like New York City. Bang. Suddenly become Sheol. The conditions are radically changed, and it becomes an extension of Sheol. So they're not in the pit. <laughs> they are in the pit. That's my it becomes point. the okay. pit. Okay. They're not going into the pit. Right. It, it becomes the pit. The pit. Okay. Okay. So there's no need walking. No. All right. Right where you are. That's just like the conditions of earth. Remember, we're saying everything is going to change. It's a judgment visited on them. Why? Because these guys have ingratiated themselves at the expense of God's people. They have not preached God's word. They've basically just made themselves comfortable <coughs> misusing and abusing the word of God for their own aggrandizement, their own benefit. They've made for themselves luxurious conditions, palatial estates, and the Lord is saying, okay, <coughs> bang. You're not going to be in a palatial right. estate. Where you are is going to be hell, because I'm speaking that condition. It's exactly where you are. Will there be any members of the congregations of these pastors and leaders who wanted to pursue truth, but didn't have the time to do so? In other words, the judgment came upon them before they <coughs> enabled the pursuing of the truth. Well... There's no such thing as before they were able. Either okay. they did or, or they, they didn't. didn't. All right. They didn't, and they're going to go under a judgment. <laughs> as simple as that. Okay. David said it's an all, it's a, it's a terrible thing to fall into the hand of the Almighty God. Yes. <clears throat> uh, let's go on. Now, Scripture teaches <coughs> commensurate at the same time <coughs> with the end of organized religion. And this is the end of organized religion. The gospel of the kingdom will be declared to the world. Matthew 24, verse 14.
And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations. Then shall the end come. <clears throat> Talking about the end of the age. So basically what's being said, when you get this false, lying, pseudo-reality out of the way, God is going to pour out, shower down truth across the whole globe. Everybody's going to hear. And of course by that time the Adamic memory would have been erased. Well, it's well on the way because at the same time you're going to have fall of kingdoms, you're going to have all the egregious conditions that are coming in to <coughs> eradicate the other egregious problems that are holding the human race in bondage. <clears throat> Turn to uh, Mark, 13th chapter. <clears throat> Mr. Jones, is what's being said going to be the same as or similar to YHVH given the ma mandate to develop but actually Lucifer given the mandate to develop before the fall are those conditions coming back and then we're we're given our shot and we do we go forward and do the right thing instead of the wrong thing yes so it's literally the same the same yes. conditions yes yes, yes. only <coughs> it's the beginning of the prototokus authority uh, in the persons of the Prototokus teachers. You're still going to have evil on the earth, but not the same evil. You're going to have the evil with the new group that's going to take control of their, take over their authority. But the Prototokus teachers now are going to have a mandate to go forth and proclaim truth. Now, <clears throat> Mark 10, verse... Mark 13, excuse Mark 13, verse 10. <clears throat> and the gospel must first be published among all nations. So it starts with, he says, this gospel of the kingdom. That's the only message he ever preached was the kingdom. <clears throat> this gospel of the what's he mean by this gospel he means the gospel in the way it was meant to be proclaimed is going to be proclaimed at this time because what you have been hearing <clears throat> is only a partial message of the kingdom as a matter of fact <clears throat> with the organized religion and religious teachers they don't preach the gospel of the kingdom they preach a, a, a distortion faith message a get comfortable in this world message the most that they preach may be a salvation message and that's it when this gospel is preached it's going to be preached in all its ramifications <coughs> so mr jones yes this gospel is going to be preached now what is the message going to be how are people going to be able to study or prepare for anything more? We're going into that. Turn to Matthew 24, verse 45. <clears throat> Who then, who then, is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Yes. So there is no studying, there is receiving. <clears throat> when Jesus proclaimed the gospel, He announced. He made an announcement. That's all preaching is. It's proclaiming something. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. 
Only kingdom of heaven is at hand. This will be done by angels from the heavens showering, covering the earth. After that, the Prototokos teachers are going to instruct. Just as Jesus did. He proclaimed, and as soon as he got through proclaiming, he would go into the temple and he would teach what he had proclaimed. This is what you're going to be doing. This is why we're being prepared now. So you have the principles, the understanding, that when the proclamation goes forth, you're going to give them the substance of what they have heard. Sorry. Are you going to answer his question? I just did. Are they going to study having heard the proclamation? There is no study. <clears throat> right. So thank you. That's what we want to hear. No. <laughs> study. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> study means you got a book here with words. Yeah. That's not happening. Okay. Remember, so, everything is going to change. <clears throat> You're going to hear. <clears throat> this is what the scripture says. Faith cometh how? By hearing. By hearing. So in, because this, <clears throat> this is a new reality at this point, because yes. the bringing of stars has happened. Yes. The understanding is that somebody hears it once and it's lodged in their hearts, their spirits forevermore. They're going to hear the overall. He says the kingdom of God. Okay. What did he do? He didn't have them study. He taught the principle. Okay. The kingdom of God is like this. Right. The kingdom of God okay. is like that's what you're going to be gotcha. doing because you have the understanding within you. Right. Yes. So will there, in addition to the angel proclamations, Fellowship. Sure. Okay, so there, we're giving and taking. You're going to be doing what we're doing now. Right. That's that way God designed the body to function. Give and take. You're going to present a principle. Your student is going to pick it up. He's going to ask questions. You're going to elucidate on the questions he's asking. And each one of us having a slightly different mechanism or composition will have a perspective which is the same thing, but in this person's words, in this person's words, which... Right. Yes, right. it illuminates, it adds. It's like a four-dimensional hologram. They got a picture in their mind, which is not just a picture in their mind, it's a reality that you are giving them through what you are explaining. Mm. It's the way Jesus did it. I was about to say, that principle of the, the, uh, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, is exactly what you're talking What about. we're doing here is secondary. When you have pages on a book, right. and you're writing, and you're reading, and you're you know trying to incorporate, Jesus didn't do that. Okay. They don't do that in the heavens. Mm. Everything is vocal, and everything becomes real through the word that you're not speaking your word, you're speaking God's yes. word. Yes. And in their spirit, it's coalescing into a reality. You're feeding them. Yes. You're giving them life. You're quickening them, actually. Well, let's go on. <clears throat> so God opens the door to the Prototokos teachers to instruct their brethren at this time. Now, Scripture indicates... Excuse me. The students of the Prototokos, the elders will have had their total belief system torn down so they will not cling to any residual Adamic teachings but accept the Prototokos doctrine as a little child. In other words, the problem you have now is you try to explain the principles of God to somebody they're going to sit there and they're going to scrutinize and they're going to compare and they're going to give you grief because what you're saying, nobody else has said. They haven't heard it before. They're going to give you a resistance. It's not going to happen with your teachers. That's going to be totally wiped out. And they're going to accept you exactly as a child accepts a parent. Right. So that's, that's the Adamic ratio. Yeah. Turn to Luke, the 18th chapter. Luke 18, verse 17. <clears throat> so, Mr. Jones, for that to happen... Evil has to be hindered. Evil is going to be blunted. It's not going to exist in the Prototokos genre. And that's why you have all this judgment. You have a judgment that's going to take care of all that stuff. You have a judgment in which nobody can tell you there's no, no such thing as aliens. Um, there's only three heavens. Uh, <clears throat> Tell me about uh, this other stuff. Nobody's. You're not going to have that grief. 
Why? Because the Lord has already pronounced a judgment against it. The people that have been teaching it are now writhing and groveling and howling in eternity for their pains that they hindered and caused by that same stuff. Luke 18, verse 17. <clears throat> this is a principle. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child mm. shall in no wise enter therein. The conditions are going to be, they're not, you, what you teach them is not going to be questioned. It's going to be accepted. They're going to look at you as a supreme authority, unlike what's happening now. Why? Because God is the one that's going to make it come to pass. It's nothing that we're doing. It's what he is doing. And he wants his word to go forth in truth, the way it was intended. And in that respect, hey, you better believe it's going to go forth. Sure. And they're going to hear. If you have somebody, <clears throat> well, you won't have anybody because they won't make it to the table to hear what you have to say. They're going to they're going to fall by the wayside long before that even happens. Amen. as a result as a result they will enter into eternity knowing their purpose mm -hmm. and their former human identification they will know exactly who they are they'll know exactly what's waiting for them in eternity and when they enter into eternity they hit the ground running ready to receive enter in to the life that's waiting for them. Revelation 5 verses 8 to 10. <clears throat> when you take in the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, and having every one of them harps, golden vials, full of odors, which are the prayers of saints, that are already <coughs> actively engaged in what they have been called to do. They're oppositors of the prayers of the saints that miss the rapture, that are coming up, and they are the custodians of those prayers, and are going to give it to the Prototokos teachers to release at the altar at the time that the Father gives the okay to do that. He goes on. <clears throat> and they sung a new song, verse 9, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. This is how they identify themselves. They don't identify themselves as Americans or Germans or even Israelites. They identify themselves as coming from one of the family groups established in the human order. <clears throat> Verse 10, And hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth where on the earth is really over. So they know their past, their true past. They know their future. They know their destiny. Each one knows his place in the overall order of things. Why? Because you taught him. You gave him an understanding of the kingdom. Yes. Why is it that they're not called the chosen people? Why is it what? <laughs> the real chosen people. Well, they are. I know, but why are they not called that, Mr. Jones? They are. They're called the elect, which is uh, beyond that. they also called the chosen. Now, you've not chosen me. I've chosen you. Right. He's not talking about Israel. He's talking about the prototokian's brethren. Exactly. So the answer is because nobody knows. At this point. That they're the chosen people. It was, that was secondary in the Old Testament is actually the, the answer. 
<laughs> first shall be last, and last shall be first. The people that are called chosen are not going to be called chosen at that point. The people who are not called chosen are going to be called chosen at that point. We are in a transition period here. You're going to see everything fall by the wayside that is not able to be sustained. You are going to be brought to a situation where you're going to be the mover and shaker of all things because the word says you've been ordained from eternity to feed the household of God. When? In due season. And you're not going to feed them milk, you're going to feed them meat. This is what we're being prepared for. This is what we're going to do. If we remain steadfast and uh, become <clears throat> the yielded vessel that God wants us to be. Yes.